Uh, what's the simplest way for tracking and measuring peak height velocity throughout maturation? Um, Bakes, I'm going to come to you first, mate, please. Okay, so I think the simplest thing to do is height and weight measurements, as, as Rodri said, on a, on a quarterly basis, and making sure that you take those at the same time each year. So, if, like for us personally, I'll do September, December, March, and June. And that's a three month window. And then as the time comes around the next year, I can look at the growth rate in that 12 month period. Um, if depending, if you want to make an estimation, you can obviously look at things like the normal world equation, which there are questions around uh, the reliability of it. Uh, you could use the Karmis Roach if you're in a situation where you can get the biological parent's height or a predicted adult height off, a, off an x ray, Fowl's method, or something like that. Uh, but there will always be um, scenarios where those things aren't possible, where the biological parents aren't present, budget isn't present to get that. So for me, the, even if you are taking those things, you should also still be taking and looking at the growth rates to see if those things marry up. Because if that prediction of height is out, um, for example, for the Karmis Roach, whichever method that you've used, then you might that it might not quite marry up but if you know the numbers so if you look at uh, some of the, the research by uh, Tanner back in the 70s you know for a, for a boy we're looking at peak height velocity around 10 centimeters a year 10.3 I think it is and a, and a peak weight velocity of nine kilograms per year approximately slightly less for girls so if you know those numbers and you can see that the growth rates are headed in that direction then you can Sort of add data points to maybe those estimations, whether it's the Millward or the Karmis Roach method, to sort of be more secure in, in the status of the athlete and look at how that's changing. But I think you know there's a lot of attention goes on to the the, the peak height velocity. And I'd like to echo Paulie's point about the peak weight velocity because when you consider the weight of the athlete coming into PH3, peak weight velocity. You know, when I I, I work solely with boys in the spire, uh, we're looking at athletes that are around 40 kilos. And when they gain nine kilograms, they've gained over 20% in body weight in a 12 month period. That's huge, you know, and, and the disruption then to relative strength and power, stiffness, plus they're dealing with a longer limb length, plus they're dealing with um, higher center of mass. There's all sorts of, there's lots of things to consider. So just like, as I say, echo that point that Paulie made about the peak weight velocity and to, to look at both things and they can happen, the timing seems to happen differently, differently with different people. So sometimes it will coincide with PH3, sometimes it will be six months or so later, usually later and also with the girls, but we've got examples of boys that it's simultaneous and slightly delayed. Good, Jamie. Yeah, just uh, completely agree with what James said there. I think um, it's important that, that whatever method we use to track maturity, we, we do it consistently and we do it the same way because they do all have error and there's, there's three or four ways to, to work out maturity offset and you've got your, your predicted adult height as James said with the Camus Roche and they, they do all have error but if you do it consistently and you use the same method every time and you see a, a, a significant change in your, in your outcomes then, then you know there's something going on. I think a couple of good indicators I just wanted to, to put out there was um, there's some evidence to say a, a 0.6 centimeter increase per month, which seems really small. But if you're doing it three or four times a year, as James said, and, and it's three months since you did it and you've seen a, a one and a half and two centimeter increase, then you know you're on that upward trajectory and, you, and you're around that peak height velocity. That's a good indicator uh, in that quarterly phase. And then around about 90% of predicted adult height is, is associated with peak height velocity. So if you're able to track this longitudinally, you might have you know, with boys, 10, 11 year old boys who, who are well before peak high velocity and girls are a little bit younger, then you're able to sort of look at the size of the jumps and almost predict when that's coming. And then and obviously take that proactive approach that I was saying about where you can see when it might be coming so we can start to manage our workloads and our, and our training sessions accordingly leading up to that. So that's not set in stone, but that's traditionally about when they are 90% of predicted adult height. And then you could, you know, use rag ratings to, to classify your players accordingly.